y'all, I'm Jamie from Shamrock Girl World, and today I'm going to talk about a big freeze event that occurred throughout the state of Texas in February 2021, and I'll show you the impact it had on my exotic fruit trees and seedlings. But before we start, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell for more videos about exotic fruits and how to grow them from seeds. You can also follow my Instagram and Facebook pages for more fruit tree updates and the occasional Irish music and dance. Hello, so today is February 20th and I have a really big update for y'all. So today is a Saturday, February 20th and we just got through a, you know, significant winter weather event from, you know, throughout the entire state. The entire state of Texas froze, you know, simply put it at that. All the way, you know, from Amarillo all the way down to McAllen, we, it, it was freezing, like below freezing the entire week. And a lot of places had snow, like record snow in places that that was never seen before. So we, yeah, we had a hard freeze last night. So there was a last hard freeze. I think it went down to maybe 25, maybe, maybe 20 here. And today is the warming trend. So, you know, a sunny skies right now. Um, it is about 10 15 in the morning I, th I think it's around 40 right now because it was it was colder this morning yesterday friday was the f first uh, warm day the temperatures got up in the 40s so there was a lot of melting there's ice everywhere just ice snow everywhere and like right now you can see uh there's some remaining some remaining uh snow snow and ice in this uh, little area right here it's still snow on the ground uh, out here, the walking area of the yard, and then this is like the greater yard area. So you know, uh, all week this was covered in 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 snow, and I think we got the last snowfall on Thursday, and it and it and the snow started last Sunday, which was Valentine's Day. So that evening the snow came in. So <laughs> you know, we've never seen this much before. So yeah, it's it's it, this is a unprecedented event, and we knew this was going to happen, but you know it it changed once you're in it. it anything can happen, and I do remember last week a lot of people were scrambling to cover their fruit trees because because again this hit the entire state, and people were were bringing their their plants inside, which I would have loved to do, but <laughs> it's a lot of plants. And um, people are, you know, putting tarps, putting blankets over their, their trees, their potted trees, bringing them inside, doing a lot of stuff to prepare their plants. And then now, now is the first day, I think the warm day throughout the state, where everybody is now un unraveling their stuff and, and seeing what the damage is, because I'm, I'm still seeing that stuff this morning. So today is the assessment so um, yeah, I want to give you like a little update of the of the events that happened. So the cold weather started in the Austin area in on Wednesday, February tenth. Yeah, the cold front blew in. The nightly temperatures went into the thirties, which is okay. You know, it's not the first time, but it was definitely the first sign of the event. But there was a lot of wind, and it knocked the internet out here. So. I was unable to see the temperatures throughout all of this. So I have no clue. I have no clue how low it got in this one. And of course, I'll never really know how cold it got in this one, but I imagine it got in the 20s because I'm going to show you everybody that's in there. So I, I was in the dark temperature wise for the ink bird. It, it didn't work. It, it started working yesterday. With, that was when we got the internet repaired. So I have no record of how cold it got in the greenhouse, but it was screaming the whole time. It, it was on, it was on, but I never, because I was away from here, I was never able to see the temperature. But it was screaming the whole time, which means it was under 50. So we'll jump to Saturday, which was last last Saturday. You know, we came out here, put the tarps up. We put one of the heat bulbs in that greenhouse went out. So I replaced it. I, I put a heat bulb in, in uh, this greenhouse. Like right now I'm thinking of the things that I should have done, but you know, I, I can't do anything right now. But you know, I wanted to cover the dragon fruits, but they were so tall, they were so bulky, and, and the covers that we had would be heavy. I didn't want to break anything, but, you know, after the fact, I'm like, yeah, I would have rather broke stuff than, than you know, risk the entire plate. But again, I'll, I'll show you a little bit. You know, that was that was all we can do. We didn't we didn't have many supplies other than the tarps. Yeah, I, I was like, I don't know. 
so yeah that's what we did so that was saturday i had to go back to austin city limits you know we were expecting to work uh so sunday was was valentine's day it was it was cold the snow came in that evening at around five o'clock and uh at my apartment there you know we were fine so monday february 15th which was uh president's day it was off that day um, we lost power at 3 a.m. in Austin, or where where I was. We were able to hear our, hear my upstairs neighbor, which never happened. So it got pin drop quiet in the apartment that woke us both up. So we you know scrambled to turn off our phones. So we had to bundle up and stay warm. And also throughout this entire time, we turned our phones off and off every maybe three or four, four hours just to check the weather and to look at text and stuff, send text and. And we were able to sort of hold our batteries for a while. I did have to charge it in my car or something like that. Uh, that on Monday, I went outside and took pictures of the snow. We got at least four or five inches of snow. Yeah, five, four or five inches of snow here. And some places uh, got seven to eight, especially in West Austin. I had a friend in West Austin, like, good grief. Like, their table was, like, stacked with snow. And it was, it was like the, the perfect winter snow. It was soft. It was blowing in the breeze and it looked really nice. But unlike last month in January, when it, when it snowed, I, I forgot when you had a warm house to go back into you and you can play in the snow. You can make a, a snowman. People did, but you had a warm house to go back into you to warm yourself up and dry your clothes. But that didn't happen. So we didn't have power from Monday morning at 3 a.m. to Thursday at 10 30 came back on at, at 10 30 so the entire time we had no heat we had no electricity you know we were bundled up the entire time uh we we were we were okay with water we were able to, to store some before the water was turned off because you know the there are broken pipes all over the dang city and there still is it's definitely now that it's thawing everything's thawing so it's it's still happening and yeah, we were we were we were no we were doing much in the in the apartment. It was freezing cold. So Monday, that first night, it low went down to sixteen degrees. That never happens. Sixteen degrees at night in Austin. And of course it was colder here. I think it went down to nine here. Um so <laughs> that was not fun. So so this location had um rolling blackouts from, from Monday through Wednesday. Didn't have power, maybe, I think they said, uh, I think my parents said they had it, had the power maybe 30 minutes to an hour at a time that it shut off for a few hours and it randomly come back on. And that was throughout the day, day and night. And on top of that, it never broke above freezing. So the nightly lows during those times went down to the teens. It got down to the single digits, something that never happens. If this, you know, this, this, this has never happened before. So I was like, oh gosh, you know, they're, they're, the plants aren't going to be happy. So I was, I was worried about them. So yeah, we, we, we had rolling blackouts here. Um, the heat sources were off. Yeah, my sister and I were in my apartment in, in the city limits, which was off during the entire time. It was supposed to be rolling, but it didn't happen that way. So we had no power the whole night. It must have been 30 degrees in the apartment. We could see our breath. You know, that's how cold it was. It, it was it was uncomfortable, but we were safe. We had water. We we had entertainment. We, we were entertain, entertaining ourselves. Like we laughed a lot, played games and stuff. You couldn't go anywhere. The roads were pretty much frozen the entire time. And we heard sirens almost every hour, like multiple times an hour. We, we heard sirens all throughout the night, day and night. A lot of traffic accidents, uh, pipe bursting, yeah, broken pipes everywhere, all over Austin. We were, we were here in the locations and toxic exposure, meaning people were putting like generators or charcoal in their houses and the fumes, uh, environmental exposure. So people outside, it was, it was, yeah, I had a, I had a police scanner. We were listening to a police scanner. We were listening to that, uh, Thursday, Tuesday night, I think. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was carnage. Yeah, we couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't go outside because we couldn't warm up inside. So it was, it was, it was uncomfortable, but we never felt, uh, you know, my, my sister keeps saying this. We never felt in fear of our lives, which, which we never felt in fear of our lives to, you know, desperation or anything like that. That was our, our week. <laughs> you know, just bundle up, stay still, right? Sleep. <laughs> try to stay warm so yeah and then we came back uh yesterday on friday because like again it was the it went to the 40s so everything was melting you know it's not like you're gonna have ice but of course last night had the last hard freeze and it went down to i think 20 here but now it's it's sunny out so now uh that that big update <laughs> 
yeah, this, this is gonna be a long video, but it's, but it's okay. I, I need to tell y'all what happened. So now I'm gonna take a look at the plants and see see the casualties, which there which there are. <sighs> there are. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at the plants. So let's take a look. The plants. So let's go in the big greenhouse. These had the uh, dragon fruits in it. So, so there are the dragon fruits. At, oh God, it smells in here. Yeah, it smells like decay in here. It's it's the dragon fruit. So as I, it's hard to see because of the the blue tarp, and then even these even these are like white. Yeah, see that 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 this is dead definitely the white stuff is dead it's mushy it's soft i can bend it i knew i knew the top stuff was going to be to be frost damaged but i didn't think it'd be this severe like this is white. i don't think i noticed this yesterday i i couldn't see very well when i came yesterday because the sun was in a weird angle and i couldn't see everything but yeah see how dull and dark they are these guys don't look good. These guys don't look good at all. Now, are they dead? I don't know. Will he bounce back? I don't know. <laughs> so it's it's so uncertain because this right here, that's that's normal. It, that is, it looks a little discolored, but it's it's it, it looks normal. Like this is like half half dead. Uh, it's green here, and it's uh, almost see through there. So this this is completely green it's hard to see so back there that's green and it comes up right here so so this is actually growing off the main stem it doesn't have this 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 plant doesn't have its own rootstock which is going to be interesting in the next few weeks um but it's it's completely green it's that's very very odd but it's an interesting sign <laughs> so yeah, this was north facing, more north facing than anything. Um, so yeah, all that stuff is white, like white that is dead. But yeah, the dragon fruits, they are not okay. They're just just nasty color all the way down, all the way down. So it's like little bits of green right there. Yeah, that's oh, a little, little bit of green right there. And then like these little cuttings that I, I put there, they're they're not good. Oh, the chimeras, they are not looking good. So that piece right there is a chimera. So the thick part, uh, I, I, I looked at the other one in the greenhouse. That one's still firm, but it might get soft. So these cuttings in the back, they're, they're, they're not looking good. And then uh, Tammy, uh, all this right here is Tammy. A lot of dried leaves. A lot of dried leaves. You know, she's not dead. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to see with all this. But yeah, all these dried brown leaves. Um, this is a uh, tamarindus. Tamarindus is completely has dead leaves. Um, this is number two. This, yeah, it's so number two. It's right there. It says number two. Um, in uh, number one is in the back. Has dried leaves. Indica. All oh, darn. And that's the cherimoya, the big cherimoya that was getting new growth finally. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I didn't see this. I didn't see the cherimoya yesterday. The leaves on the bottom of it. It's, it's hard to tell. The leaves on the bottom of it are are shriveled. But the this potted dragon fruit is fine. The Peruvian apples are fine. Uh, the kumquat is fine. So the kumquat's fine. It's actually putting on new flowers. The weird. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just all of this. And 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 I also feel bad because I didn't get. I didn't have time to trim this. I didn't have time to take cuttings from from this trellis. So all this stuff. If I had time to do it, you know, I would have had some more cuttings. So the biggest casualty in this greenhouse is, of course, the, the, the dragon fruits. The, the most cold weather sensitive plant that I have, like freezing. Yes, I was worried about these guys. Not so much with the tamarins, not so much, but definitely these. And it's just the cold air. That's the biggest thing. Um, so that's them. Go in here. 
it's hard to see in here because it's so dark. Oh gosh, it smells funny in here. Yeah, it smells like decay in here because of the drag uh these dragon fruits. So yeah, uh okay, the lights are still working because I wanted to make sure of that. Most of these guys look okay. That is a fact. But as you can see, that's a that's a cherimoya. I think that was a year over a year old. Yeah, over a year old cherimoya. Uh two year old cherimoya. That right there is a two-year-old cherimoya. Oh yeah, the, another chimera. It's 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 mushy. It's just mushy. It's just yeah. That's that's where it was. You know, I, I can move it. I can squeeze it. It's dead. But this part, this part is firm. This part's firm. But this definitely these two. This one and that right there was new growth. Uh, the other little chimera back there is drooping too. So definitely the new growth of the cherimoids died, which uh, that's not a, that's not a surprise. Oh, I'm I'm upset about these guys. These are my persimmon seedlings, my newest project, and I should again I'm I, I'm thinking about things that I should have done, but not like I can do it now. Yeah, so I'm I'm ups I'm bummed about these guys. It's really hard to see. So this one, this one, this one, this one. This one that's coming up is probably dead. That's trying to come up is probably dead. And then there's one uh, right there where my finger is. Those are dead. So those were the soaked ones. And these four, these five that remain are the stratified persimmons. I wasn't worried at all about the pomegranate because technically these guys should be dormant. But they'll, I think they'll bounce it bounce back. So they're, they, yeah, they're, they're crunchy a little bit on the top. See how see-through that is? Yeah, that's, that might not, well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely injured. This one, this plant looks, looks fine. These are the sugar apples. I noticed this this morning. So those would have been, they started popping up last week. These are, um, pomelos and I planted them almost two months ago. So they were just now coming up. So these were dwarf pomegranates, my little dwarf pomegranate that's in the uh, bottom. I had one fruit and these were just starting to pop up too. So it looks like just two made it, but this has water in it. So I bet it froze. Poinsettias. These are a star fruit, which I'm surprised they're okay, you know, for now. So that's interesting. Um, I might've lost all my sour sops again, but to be fair, this happened before the, the snow event. I think it just, the snow event just killed them. I was losing my my sour sops before. I have no clue. I have, I have no clue. I, and I can't transplant anything. I don't have room. So yeah, these are sour sops, uh, passion fruit. Yeah, everything down here looks fine. Absolutely fine. Little moon cactuses. <laughs> they look like they have more puppies. They have more little more little pups on them. Um, you guys are fine. Just interesting. Oh yeah, my friend who gave me these, they, they live in Houston and they got snow, so I'm curious if hers made it. Yeah, see how dark they are, the uh, pomegranates, and then these these ones in the front. So, so it's weird, stuff towards the middle was fine, but of course, of course, the whole cold air was hitting this and killed everything on this back half, so uh, that was, that's interesting. So everything towards the middle survived really good. They're still green. So they, so these uh, cherimoyas were putting on growth, but the, the branches look okay. It's just the leaves that are bad. I put Christmas lights in between it just to disrupt the air. Care uh, the jackfruits. I'm not in love with these guys anymore, but they, yeah, they're, 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 they look bad too. On oh, my big pineapple back there, it looks, it's discolored, but the bottom looks green. So that might be a waiting game. Little tamarins back there. They're they're brown. Um, the dwarf pomegranate had a little flower. I think it's dead. <laughs> it's fine. So all these plants right here look fine. If anything, if anything was tall, it got it got singed a little bit. Yeah, this is a jackfruit leaf that looks dark, really dark, very shiny too. Oh, and then I was worried about this. I bought this plant two weeks ago. I was like, no, I don't want to lose it. I'll put the name up. <laughs> but yeah, I was worried about these guys. Like, these are the newbies. They're not, no. But it looks like they're fine. Uh, the citruses, okay. 
they look shriveled. Yeah, they look a little shriveled. So I might lose the leaves, but I think the plant itself might be good. They look, they look stunned. Yes, it makes, and everything over here is fine. That is very odd. These guys are fine. Except for y'all, the, the sour sops. White sapotes are fine. That's everybody. That looks like everybody. So it's a mixed bag, which is good. No, good compared to not all of them. <laughs> there was something good was going on in here to where it wasn't damp. I did not, I, I, oh yeah, these guys are getting water today. I hadn't watered them in two weeks, so I am going to water them. So let me go ahead and go back outside and I'll talk about my, my plans. <laughs> so, so as you can see, yeah, the, 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 the dragon fruits in here, they're, they're damaged. They're, they're damaged. The white stuff. I, if anything, I'll cut those off because that was brand new growth. So not, it's not like I had any tolerance or anything. But yeah, it's just a waiting game. Again, I never had this happen before. But I never had any cold damage to the dragon fruits that you know made me worried. Of course, one plant or two had a weird branch, and you know, I didn't I didn't worry about that. But these are entire plants, and these guys are three years old. The 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 dragon fruits are three years old. <laughs> so I'm like, ah, three years of, of of raising them, and they and you know one week stream cold event took them out. So I'm like, ah will they be salvageable so uh so that's the biggest casualty the biggest casualty of, of all the both greenhouses is is the dragon fruit so uh the the, the tamarins reacted negatively but it'll be only time will tell uh, yeah pretty much yeah this is a waiting game this is all just a waiting game just to see what the plants will do if they'll get worse if they'll drop leaves if they do nothing and continue on growing like nothing happened I won't know. It's, it's it'll take several weeks to see if anything will happen. That's that's the consensus I'm seeing with all these uh, Facebook pages. Just just wait and see. Don't go pruning. Don't don't throw it away. Don't prune. Don't don't give fertilizer. I won't do that. Um, if anything, the only thing I can do is if give everybody some water because they do need it. So it's it's just a waiting game. Just a waiting game. And then of course throughout the entire thing. It got me thinking about doing off-grid power or heat sources for the plants because um I saw a lot of people use propane heaters for their greenhouses and you know in their greenhouses and garages when they pull their plants in so I might think about doing that I think one person said they used two tanks for 24 hours or or something along like that I, I was like oh, that's, that sounds like a lot but again, the entire week was below freezing. So you had to use it continuously. And it was uh, cloudy some days too. Is, it, is this week long freeze going to happen again? Maybe not. I don't know. Every year we have a snow event. So if I were to get the propane tanks and then put them in there just to keep the plants happy, that's fine. And then I always toyed with the idea of getting uh, solar panels, get like a an inexpensive set of solar panels and use that to power the greenhouses. I think I could pay maybe 300 or maybe 500. I won't, I'm, and you know, I won't mind for the panels, the battery and all the circuits and hookups. But I wasn't sure if, I didn't know how much the greenhouses use and I didn't know if, you know, how soon would powering the greenhouses use up the power. But you know, as I'm thinking now, just buy it and find out and always use electricity as backup, if anything. So, yeah, that is definitely on my lessons list. Off-grid, you know, just in general, too. Again, we didn't have electricity. We didn't have any way to cook food other than tea, like and like tea candles. If you get, get creative with tea candles, you warm up stuff. But, you know, just in general, too, another way to heat, heat yourself and then heat food. And then also, <laughs> then in my case, heat my plants. So that is on my list. But the good thing about the dragon fruits is, is that I do have cuttings. Uh, the cuttings were, were here. I'm so glad I left them here because they would have froze with us <laughs> if I took them with me. So they they were in my parents' bathroom, the I guess the most neutral room in, in the house. They're doing good. They're doing good. So I'm going to nurture the heck out of these cuttings because they are, you know, technically genetic duplicates of these big plants. Get them rooting. Get those guys ready to get transplanted and put on little trellises. You know, not all is lost, but it's almost starting from ground zero. 
but I am. I'm very optimistic of the uh, five gallon bucket trellises that I created. I do plan on making some more with these new little cuttings and then training them to the trellis, which will be interesting. So that's definitely a plan, but I'm going to nurture the heck out of these because if, if all those dragon fruits, except that one, which is very interesting, if they all die or if I have to cut them down to the rootstock, which is uh, another question, is the rootstock still alive? Is it strong? Because, you know, unlike a seed started or anything, it has roots. So if I can give it a chance to grow, it'll grow probably quickly throughout this year. But um, if, if, if all else fails and I have to cut and throw every single one of those plants out, I can still have genetic duplicates and start them back up again. So it's definitely going to get be hard to get any gardening or lighting or heating supplies because everybody is going to be buying stuff because again the entire state was hit the entire state was freezing for days on end you know a whole week or so the entire state so you know all the way from amarillo which is i think zone six all the way to brownsville to the border rio grande valley which is i think i think they're 10a everybody got freeze and i think everybody got snow this this has never happened before you know rio grande citrus valley of, of if, if i were ever to relocate in texas I'd, I'd relocate there because all my plants would be happy and like i saw a video of a guy in mcallen which is i think flirting with 9b to 10a he was putting like chimeneas and, and little grills next to his beautiful avocado trees you know this stuff has never happened before and, and, you know, they, they grow citrus down there and, uh, you know, papayas. I, I, I saw, I've seen papayas grow down there. So everybody is, is, is affected by this, not only with their plants, but also with their housing. Cause you know, with all the pipes bursting and, and plumbing issues and that are still pending. Cause you know, a lot of people still don't have, uh, like today, Saturday, a lot of people still don't have water because, you know, thawing, the pipes have to thaw. So it, it, everybody's in a bind so i'm not gonna be, i'm gonna get my list ready but i'm sure as heck not gonna buy anything because you know the supply and demand is is, is gonna be affected so right now is the recovery phase no matter what what situation you're in of uh, trees people are already talking about i'm gonna replace my trees only time will tell if, if if people's trees will will bounce back and recover so this week has been the biggest turning point with my plants Everything is going to be unpredictable from here on out. Definitely the next month or so. Hopefully once I get these guys out, uh, it'll give us a month to see if, if anything will bounce back while in the greenhouse. And then hopefully once they're out of the greenhouse, I'll get a better assessment and they'll be able to enjoy the actual weather that they want and actually need. You know, I'm you know, thankful I was safe through all of this. My family was safe. Yeah, I learned a lot over the past few weeks, you know, survival and, and getting prepared, being prepared. You know, I was prepared at some things and unprepared at other things. I have a lessons list. And I have a, a, you know, what to buy list. You know, I don't, it's not urgent. I don't need all this stuff right now because hopefully it won't be like this again. Apparently a similar situation like this happened in 2011 in, in Austin, apparently, where the electrical grids were compromised. Now, I didn't live in the city limits at that time, so I'm curious to know myself at this point to know what happened. But I do remember that snowstorm that we had, and we had maybe two or three inches of snow. I do remember that day, but we were, we were here. So we were unaffected, really. You know, we had electricity. We had heat during that time, but I have no clue what happened in the city. Learning lesson for everybody involved. Um, yeah, so that's that's the, a huge update. You know, I, I did talk a lot, but I'm the kind of person that I need to talk things out <laughs> and, and listen back to it and, and, and my thought process. Yeah, it's a big update, but again, the entire state was frozen for a week. Texas is a huge state, huge state. There are like 27 million people and just, you know, so much land, so many zones and just everybody was hit at once. Anything that was happening the last few weeks has halted, halted or completely stopped. So I'm going to be taking a lot of notes the next few weeks, definitely until I break these guys down and the uh, spring weather finally comes that that's, that's my sigh of relief. Once these guys are out of there, I'll, I'll, I'll breathe a sigh of relief and be able to, to treat these guys a little bit better and then the temperatures won't be going cold to where I need to protect them. So the next few weeks, definitely the next month, if anything, is just the waiting game. And I'll, I'll give my plants that. Yep, just gonna give y'all an update and, and hope that these guys pull through and 
able to continue having these plants from you know throughout the next summer and throughout the year